Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, a meeting of uh, the Northampton uh, Urban Forestry Commission sub Educational Subcommittee. And even though it's, uh, let me just find our Education Outreach Subcommittee. Um, and we're here at Spring Grove Cemetery, 320 North Maple Street uh, in Florence, Mass. So, uh, do we have any public comment? Would you like me to take that? Yes, I would. If you wouldn't mind. So feel free to, Jen, you sort of put a, an agenda together. You can. Yeah. Here. Uh, she gave them all away. I did. I did. Okay. Uh, uh, um, so I guess, I mean, my thought was uh, it's just an agenda I came up with, but I'm happy to go other places but uh, uh it's the topics we'll, we'll call those the topics under the initial agenda yeah that, because that uh those topics are not listed on there right it's open-ended right um so i don't know if we want to do a quick overview of the planting season things that went well things that need improvement i sent around the um kind of the uh summary of the fall planting that uh I presented to the Urban Forestry Commission meeting, so we don't probably don't really need to go over that, but basically we mostly cleared out the nursery. And uh, yeah, so um, there's a few places we can get the plant that we have trees for, but the, you know, it got cold. So, and right. um, as a matter of fact, I took a lit line when we closed the nursery up. I um, closed, let's see. There's probably about 30 trees left in there. Mm -hmm. 32 trees probably that are plantable. And so do those include those uh party rubbers that the you know leader uh, yeah. uh, uh I own, I have eight of them in there. Yeah. So there's some of the hardy rubbers that were we purchased uh -huh. this spring, and then there's a few left over that are not so not yeah. looking so good that were from the year before. Yeah. So I think I only counted the eight that were good. Yeah. And then we had a bunch of new um London plants. London plants yeah. in there that initially weren't good and then they were. Yep. So these are those, those are the ones in the they're all in grow bag. Yeah. So we only have uh we only have two B and B trees left, and that's the sterling London. So what we did is we pulled all of those in. Everything's in piled in the middle. So and I'm not gonna mulch it this year, I'm just gonna leave it be. Mm -hmm. Well protected from mice. Iron uh, White. Hey. Good morning. Look forward to this one. Tom, 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 Tom you, there's a, if you wouldn't mind, there's a chair. If you go back in the other room, there's a long table. Get one. I saw, I, yeah, grab one of these chairs Great. for yourself. Um, the other thing, too, is that we have a funeral here today. So we need to. Make sure that we adjourn by 11 so okay. you can all exit here before the funeral procession gets here. That's all. Mm -hmm. So that so that's so there's 32 trees. So I mean we have obviously room. Um that does not include all of the plant material that uh like the small plant material that we've yeah kind of yeah. been playing around that's still there that you know we may have to upsize if we want to ever use them in the street because they're in those small like one to two gallon. Containers. Those are in oak. Mostly. Yeah, there's oaks, there's persimmons, there's oh. there's a mix of stuff in there that we'd have to sort of go through. I know there's a lot of lilacs that we a lot of lilacs. Figure yeah. out yeah. what to do with. Maybe we just give them away. Maybe we just give, bring them down to the tree uh, Arbor, Day. Arbor Day and just give them away in the containers. And just a selection is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's all the stuff that we potted from the first year of the pandemic. So, yeah, we could just. I, I'd be more than happy to bring them down on, in the back of a truck, you know, or even uh, put them in the back. Yeah, put them in the back of a truck, and we can just park the truck in that parking space or something, and then people can just you sand them off the tailgate and say, "Here you go." Thanks, great trees. Yeah. So. You know, back there at Arbor Day. <laughs> Those are all Sorry, small. Right. They're in small yeah. pots. Yeah. 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 So, so that's so that's that's the emptiest it's been since we built it. Basically, awesome. So, 
And I know there's at yeah. least 15, half of those trees have a, have a designated place that we just didn't get to plant. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. That's pretty good. Um, well, that's the update. And then uh, we, we don't have, uh, we do not have an active contract with anyone at the moment. So um, we would end up, um, you know, after this meeting, hopefully we'll have a better handle on what we're going to be doing or what we'd like to do in this uh, the spring. And then um, I'll need to start working on uh, figuring out what Amherst mm -hmm. Treasury has for stock. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to put a contract together because our last contract that we had with them was last spring. So we didn't, we didn't, we just you know, didn't have a contract this fall uh, with any nursery. Oh, so right. We, so as we just emptied the nursery, and if we needed a particular oh. tree, you would just get them off, yeah. off contract. Yeah. It's a bake off. Really? Yeah. This, I don't know. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, I can't claim these. I just bought these. Oh. So Call it. These are from uh, Wild Chestnut uh, Cafe on the. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to walk it. It's, it's behind the yeah, Fitco really? uh, pages. Here we go. Thank you. No, thanks. Was it not the Lucian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say again? Is it used to be Evolution? Yeah, that's oh, what I mean. Oh, man, that's very good. Yeah, I noticed that one of them was still warm. This is dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's all the, that's the quick update okay. from the nursery. Great. That's good. Did you want this, Jim? Uh, it's okay. All right. I think so. Um, so, any other comments about that? Any questions? That was a big goal that we had to like. Clear the deck down there. Yeah. Comment couldn't have done it without Jen. Well, with your knowledge of trees, because it was very, it was this huge puzzle. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to, okay, we've got these trees, the inventory, and we've got these sites. What tree best fits that site from what we have? And it's not that easy. It's just a lot of yeah. thinking. <laughs> it, it, it did. And I, would, I also would like to say that I think. Jen and Sue both did an awesome job actually corralling all the documentation that was sort of in different places and working with Alicia and Rob and mm -hmm. Christina to sort of like get all of that stuff mm -hmm. in one place where it's actually usable in essence. Not that it was usable before, but it was just hard to figure out where things were. Mm -hmm. Spending the time meeting with uh, residents who actually had requested setback yeah. trees and we hadn't really been in touch with them. So there was a lot of like and Christina, was, the, yeah, the yes, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of cleanup to do, and I yeah. there's no way that uh, Bob ran around, yeah, there's no way that that could have gotten done, and I think this was really sort of a great way to reset mm -hmm. um, a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. And the other thing, too, is that the, the whole thought process really that's another bigger topic for the whole commission, I think, is how we go about planting going forward and the volume. So we we planted a hundred and seventy one trees. Mm -hmm. I think is what our number is because mm -hmm. we just did the tally. So you know the question now we're really at the two hundred mark, like we originally thought that's what we were going to do. Yeah. But we had seeded that many years in a row, but we're also running out of potential large plants in these sites. But is that for the whole year or just for the fall? No, that's that's for the whole year. Okay. <laughs> because we 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 stopped. Uh, <laughs> In the spring, because of the warm weather. Yeah. yeah. So I think our last planting was at like, the first week of June, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the spring, we had a little more trouble because um, Rob left and uh, Alicia, we were like behind the eight ball with big saves. It yep. just was not, we didn't plant as many as we could have, but it, it was fine. But we, we're trying not, we're, we're planning not to plant 400 trees a year right. like, going, going ahead because we. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, capacity wise, I think it's really about a capacity issue in two ways. It's a capacity issue in uh, people, and it's a capacity for issue in space. Like, we just want to, you know, the only way that would, if we had a particular die off of a particular species because of some disease or some test, then 
we would go back to that. But I think uh, we really need to sort of take a step back again. I think another year strategically plan, but also um, really think about trying to take care of the stock that we we have. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one of the biggest things that uh, is my my concern, like gold, globally, just outside of Brockhampton, is just the amount of money that's available for communities to plant. Yeah. But there's like uh, the IRA money, fortunately, is usable for maintenance, which is unlike any other grant monies. But the problem is, is that they there just isn't enough staff mm -hmm. to maintain plant material. So that's a concern. And we have a really good uh, success rate. Our mortality is, you know, uh, less than 5%, mm -hmm. right, Kent? It's probably less than 5%? Or it's around 5%. Around 5%, which is, considering their street tree, we've been in the worst environment ever, I think it's pretty it's better than the average. That's unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you. So, but anyways. But we had a few years we planted 400 yeah. trees, and yeah. then we had some drought, and there was a lot of anxiety about the safety of the trees <laughs> over years of years of drought. Yeah, it's been. And now trim, pruning and yeah. training them is yeah. becoming daunting. <laughs> and we started that one. Right. Right. Oh, and right. Right. street signs. Yeah. What does that mortality mean? Is it like five year mortality or? Uh, that's the mortality over the seven year period. Yeah, it's it's a, it's the number of years to the reporting time. It's not five year mortality. So it, you know, it could get over. bigger for the trees that were planted in the last few years. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so you, you could have one year that has higher mortality than, than another year. It's just, I think, the way that you ran the numbers. Oh, well, the, the two the two year ago um, cohort, maybe some more of them are going to die. Right, right. Yeah, kind of no. So. The other piece of that, too, is we, um, st we had kind of a bigger initiative to plant like tulip trees, for example, and we um, figured out that we really can't plant them in the fall. That they're just uh there there are certain species that have kind of fleshy roots that like magnolias and some other trees that generally don't do well plant in the fall and um we just lost a fair amount of tulip trees so we're only planting them in the spring now so that may be like that's a blip that um mm -hmm. i don't know how big of a blip it is but we lost a fair yeah, amount of tulip trees yeah so something. so that was a piece of figuring out that i think we will have amended and that's you know that's a kind of like think of them as climate change trees. We're trying to, you know, mm -hmm. you know move trees that are on the edge of hardiness to mm -hmm. where we are. Which there are tulip trees here. Which is, yeah. um, is that a good thing then to be running out of sites or locations so that we can be maintaining this, 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 what we have? I, I mean, I think it's reality. There's just you know, there hadn't been any trees planted for a chunk of years for various reasons. And then when Rob started, you know, he, like there was whole streets that didn't have street trees. So yeah, we do a street, <clears throat> meet up at a street and plant. And now it's made up here, here, go there, here. And that's another reason why we can't plant as many because we just have to split up and it takes longer. We just get less done, which is, which is okay to me. You know, I mean, we just don't have the capacity on the other end to to really maintain them. I mean, we need to. In the later part of this meeting, there's a whole, you know, all those um, uh, uh, guards on the bottom of the trees. Like, there's a whole bunch of them that are. Uh, yeah, we got to get we got to get some systematic way of moving through and taking those off. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's a little bit later in the meeting, but. Um, and there's always going to be more sites from takedowns. Yeah, so you have a lot of like ash trees coming down. Yeah. For instance, that'll give us an opportunity to plant a whole street. Mm -hmm. Ice pond drive. Yep. And up at Village Hill. Mm -hmm. Village Hill, you have Ridgeview. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we have Armory Street. We went in there oh, yesterday yeah. and took down half of those trees. We oh, did. Mm -hmm. well, um, Armory Street parking lot yeah. has a, a large amount of ash trees in it. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely places where we can do some planting. 
in mass. Um, the other thing is, is that I don't know if we'll be able to cap, you know, we, I don't know if we have outplanted the school properties, but um, I think there's actually an opportunity personally to plant uh, at the front of JFK School, which is this just barren, giant, and lawn mowing waste of fuel. Even mm -hmm. next to the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, there's there's really nothing there. So we planted one tree. But the the uh things have changed now in the mm -hmm. dynamic of the ground screw. So I think that we'll have a, a lot more success. So I think the high school is pretty well pretty well planted out. Um I went over there last year and looked around yeah. with David Lukens and and some of the science teachers. And you know, there may be a few select, like when that beach goes in the in yeah. the front of the tree, yeah. in the front of the school, but uh, yeah, it's pretty planted. It is. It was plant. It was planted well after the uh, the renovation. Yeah, mm -hmm. the JFK was not though. JFK didn't really get a lot of trees. They got a lot of shrubs and they got trees in the parking lot, but they didn't get any trees in the front. So, being around the border of the hot Um. Yeah. No. You. No. You could. No, as long as they're out of uh, the way of where people would be playing active sports and just mm -hmm. in consideration is sort of the high level of maintenance that has to happen there. I don't see why not. I mean, that's what I did at Sheldon Field. I lined the first base, the third base side with trees that they were going to throw away and then the nursery at Smith Bolt and they're still there. Oh. It was 25 years ago. Well, and the same thing sort of at our can field. Yeah. It didn't build a lot of it. Yeah, but yes, our can field was very barren. Uh, mm -hmm. We just sort of filled it up. You know, because a lot, of, a lot of the places in the parks really don't get any, there's no use at all. There's no uh, kind of uh, any kind of active recreation. It's more passive, mm -hmm. you're sort of meandering around. So, mm -hmm. the, other, the other place too is uh, Ellabrook, Ellabrook Field, but on the other side of Ellabrook Field. So, when you're on Route 66 and you're looking at that house that sort of sits in the middle. The land on the right, there's a um, there's a building lot there, mm -hmm. so we shouldn't plant anything in there any longer. We have a row of shag bark hickories mm -hmm. in there, but that actually was that got carved out as a building lot, and we're going to build a dog kennel there. We're also going to build uh, oh. potentially a new uh, satellite fire station. This was many years ago. On the other side, though, there is nothing. It's just so there's another place where. We can do some setback plantings because there is utility wires on that side, but there's definitely, um, you know, yeah, I'm going to stay here till 2027. So you have all this time you can go in the parks after that. I don't know. Yeah. But, 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 but I, I would prefer that we can be playing pickleball. Yeah. No, I don't I'll think I'll be playing <laughs> I'll be going to PT if I play pickleball. You know? That's why I don't play pickleball. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's, um, Go ahead. I was gonna say, did we did we did everybody have a chance to say what went well and what needs improvement? What do you wanna chime in? Yeah, I'm amazed with what we're just saying about the volunteers showing up on the front and putting the trees and culverts and all the stuff. So I know there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes around. Yeah, I mean, to get that site ready for volunteers to show up. So I think that's going really well. Everybody thought there was enough support. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. The garage and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, what didn't go well is what's behind the scenes for that. You know, it was those two people Big who have saying, taken on way too much uh, of the work. Abby. And plus, no, as soon as and yeah, plus yeah, it's um, guys, right. and I know that it's still convoluted. You know, who yeah. talks to Dick say how do we know where it's safe to plant all that stuff? So you know, we'll get those processes together mm -hmm. hopefully to the yeah, yeah. and take some of the burden off the desk. Um do we want to follow this or do you have other stuff? No, it's yeah. Everything from your point of view, if there's anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think that our capacity problem is going to change. Mm -hmm. So we're having operational capacity issues all across the board through the department and many other municipalities in the state. Are. So I mean, I think the level of support as long as I'm here 
is what we're going to have for what, what we've had this year, this past fall. Having seven or eight trees instead of 12 trees is actually more manageable uh, for my staff, especially yeah. if I can't be there or there's only two of them. It takes two people really to move all that stuff around to get it delivered. Um, so when we're doing about 12 or 13 or 14 trees, it takes three of us. It's a little more time consuming. We have to start the day before, et cetera. So that's a manageable amount. Uh, you know, uh, if for some reason the operational things get better, wonderful. If they, they don't, if they get worse, then we just sort of have to revisit all that. You know, which you've also cut, you've also helped by returning things is a big help. So for example, we don't have to do that. Uh, we've also- we, we bring all the buckets back in our- Yeah, so I mean, like when you have the ability to do those things, that's great. And I, and I, and I don't want to put any more pressure on the volunteers because it's enough that you're actually you know, setting all the stakes up, doing the dig saves, talking to the homeowners, taking the photographs, uh, taking the initial flack if someone is complaining they don't want a tree, uh, then showing up to plant them, and then picking everything up, bringing it back, and then staking them, and then, by the way, pruning them, right? I mean, so <laughs> if you think about it, DPW really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot. Okay, uh, or mine, water. Or mine, <laughs> but my point being is that if the capacity increases, then we can increase it when the need arises. But I think we have a good uh, symbiotic relationship at the moment where, where um, it's it's flexible. We're also really blessed because we have a we have a really uh, we have a good canopy in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike communities like Boston, uh, New York, uh, even um, yeah, in smaller town, in larger towns around Springfield, you know, our canopy is solid. So we have we have a pretty solid canopy where we're above the median. So um, so we'll just keep plugging away. I don't, I don't I think it went great. I mean the communication level was great. Um the one thing I would ask that you could make a note of and Jen don't get mad if I ask you to do this, but <laughs> it would be really helpful if we could just come up and we, the, maybe the two or the four of us can we need to have some kind of a uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I can that you can send to me with the list of trees every time you want them planted. So what you're doing is you're sending them in an email body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easier. It's much easier for for me to just cut and do. Oh, okay. Do the, do okay. Yeah. Give to somebody. Okay. Uh, it, that or it's just easier for me just to input the data. So there's a lot of data input that happens that no one sees, mm -hmm. and so when it's in a email form, it has to be saved. So I don't lose it electronically, and then I print it out at a later date. And then either Brooke or Abby or myself, we come in here, we enter the data. Mm -hmm. So it would be helpful if we could just put it in some sort of a spreadsheet that works. Do you have Microsoft or not? Uh, the office? You mean like yeah. Excel? I have Sheets, but I don't. I don't sure. know. Very much. The same. I mean, yeah, she, Sheets is. It, work? Sheets is fine because Sheets is. Uh, that's what we use to sell the data. That's how it's shared. It's on a Google Drive. So well, we could work together. And do it's just yeah. I can learn it. I just don't know. I just don't. No, know. I don't know what else. I'm going to start by that. What we'll do is we'll, maybe we the three of us should just have a conversation about how it would look. Yeah. And that way, there it's sort yeah. of similar. And yep. My goal would be to give. My goal is to be able to give the data set that, like the one that Ken's is familiar with, the big spreadsheet yep. that we have. When we go to do our next tree inventory, I can just give that to the vendor and say, "Here, input all this data. Here's all these. You know, instead of walking around everywhere and uh, just, mm -hmm. I'll have to geolocate them, but you've sort of already done that kind of sort of what would be easier than actually uh, having them have to, to to inventory every single." small tree plus it makes our life easier but that's just like uh just something that's the only thing yeah we can that would we can do that. be able to add a column and use one of those formulas that puts it in another um shape yeah it could you could do it that way well that's like again, that's just for notation but for that's it other than that everything was fine that's and that was fine too it's just well, if it if it if it expedites, I mean, if it, it, yeah. it expedites, Thank you. yes, and that it helps. Thanks for managing our expectations for, you know, recruiting volunteers. If we're only going to do seven to eight trees for planting, mm -hmm. then you know, some days we had too many people yep. this time because mm -hmm. we thought 
maybe we'll get 10 <laughs> to ask for is, but now we see. Yeah, again, that doesn't mean that we can't. I mean, you know, if we have a place where 10 trees would fit in mm -hmm. and we can get the 10 trees. I mean, you know, I think it's also site specific too. Right. When you're driving all over the place and dropping one tree off, yeah. it's a lot. It takes three quarters of a day. Right. By the time you load everything up, you fill the buckets up, mm -hmm. you get the water truck ready to roll, mm -hmm. fill the buckets, get the tree diapers, deliver everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. but when you're in concentrated in one place and they're bare root, you can put everything on the trailer one time and you're lickety split, it's mm -hmm. delivered. So that's, you know, so the same thing rings true for having volunteers going from, you know, Hockenham Road all the way up to Leeds and yeah. 10 stops in between, yeah. you know, yeah. people are driving all over the place. Yeah. It's not as easy as it was right. when we first started this venture yeah. where we had yeah. a whole bunch of tiny locations at one point. Yeah, you had a lot more stuff. Um, we, yeah, we, well, yes and no, we had, it was different. We, we have the same amount of staff for the planting part. It's the, it's the, it's the large tree care that we don't have the staff. Oh, wow. So that's all been contracted out. So this, this whole end of the, uh, planting and pruning of all these young trees is still done in conjunction with the DPW, the Forestry Commission and the Trino Hampton folks. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that changing. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay. So, um, do we already so the fall nursery, um, visit? Do, do you still want to go to the nursery? To the Amherst nursery? Yeah. To Mark. To yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we need to uh, we need to I, I don't I don't have that in front of me, but I don't for backing that's okay. It's just we'll be backing into a conversation about planting locations or we're not at that point. Yeah, it's okay. all kind of how to populate the tree tracker list. Of, well, I know that you have a new list of, of stump grinds. I do. Yeah, so that would be helpful for me to get because then we could get a group of people who could go out and stake. Okay. And now, because it's you know we don't have to dig the them snow. now. Yeah, yeah. Before the, the snow, snow and, and we could at least know small, medium, and large. Yeah. So then the next thing part of that is potential planting sites. Um, my understanding is Rob would literally ride his bike everywhere, <laughs> would ride everywhere, and say, hmm, "What's that address? It could be a tree there," mm -hmm. and. We don't have that going on. So I don't know how we approach this in a methodical way. There are um, some priorities that have been, I mean, Rob internalized the priorities that they should be, you know, where children are going to walk to school, there needs to be shade, where, you know, gateways to the city for beautification. He really thought in terms of heat islands and mm -hmm. um, people exercising and being able to be outside. And the city tree commission also, you know, codified that with a list of all the different right planting priority site priorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the other ones? Uh, bus stop, bus stop, economic justice zones with the state Gate, designated yeah. certain areas, EJ neighborhoods, gateways to the city. I mean, I did. Um, I, I just, there's examples of things we could work on. Like one of the, I should just put up this like flow chart thing if I. Um, got a flow chart. I mean, this is just my, the two ways my brain works. Um, so this is kind of, I, I'll, can I stick it up a little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. You want some tape? Um, I Here. I brought tape. Okay. Jeez. Sorry. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I used to be a teacher. <laughs> Maybe I still Sorry, am. Teacher. Maybe I still am. Yeah. <laughs> so. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's the way James. That's, that's, right? that's, 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 that's the way James' brain works. That's correct. Yeah. All right. So, you know, when we come to think about 
planting sites. I mean, one of the sources of planting sites is the is the stump grinds. So um, those all have to be gone to visit. And then trees been taken it, down, yeah. they've been stumped ground, yeah. you can plant the site again. Is it or is it even appropriate for a tree? Like because there were some that clearly <laughs> just what you yeah, know, right. the reason there was a reason why the tree didn't make it yeah. where it was. It was or sometimes they're out in like you know, off of uh, Glendale, and there's a billion trees out there, and it would be kind of so we'd have to deal with the neighbor, and it, it just was silly to put a tree right there. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but one of the thoughts I had was these are um, back here. We also have a form online, there, so everybody knows where people can request a setback tree, which is 20 feet from the right of way, and because it, it benefits the public. So we do get a trickle of those. Yeah, Christina like says 10 a year or something to yeah. 15. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And Christina, you said you you were interested in I think that taking that part on. Yeah. And other tree requests may become just people contacting the city and saying, I want to tree in front of my house and if you don't, I don't know how that workflow works. Work. That's just basically I get an email and I used to send it to Alicia mm -hmm. or Rob. And someone well, emails me directly. And, and um, that went on a spreadsheet. That went so, on the that went on the tree tracker sheet okay, at some point. Still going on the tree tracker. Yes. Okay. Yes. The dilemma is best bang for our shade buck is setback trees. Mm -hmm. They are they're intensely mm -hmm. you know, the work intensive it takes a lot of work. So, um. You want to take over there, Jen? Yeah. So, I mean, this, these were the place to stand that people could see. So, anyway, that this is kind of the way I see where we could use a hand. Um, so, the tree wardens up here, these blue lines are communication. We're trying to minimize the number of people that actually communicate with Rich just because he's a busy guy and, you know, just for efficiency purposes. So, um, I'm I don't know if Sue's still willing, but I'm willing still to be kind of the planting coordinator. Um, I'm willing to do the tracker unless yeah. there's somebody who thinks it would be fun and wants to do it. Um, you have to meet a couple hours every week almost. Yeah, during the, yeah during the season. I know. Fill in all the little boxes and the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do it. And it's one thing I can manage to do. So these two people kind of so I divided in kind of the planting program and the maintenance program. Mm -hmm. So um, what, well, let's go on the maintenance side first. So um, the pruding is Rich Parrish. He's got a group of trained people. He's figuring that out. He's communicating with Rich. So that's pretty much kind of taken care of. Um, I feel like there needs to be an equipment coordinator, not a huge job, but somebody who, who we can communicate with. We need three more shovels and I don't know how that things are purchased, but we could somebody could figure that out. Um, there is history of purchasing things. I just don't know how that happened. Um, and you know, things need to be cleaned and sharpened, and and that could be like somebody's in charge of it, but then they could get a group of volunteers to clean all the tarps or and they whatever. Can ask Vicky yeah. to get the volunteers. Yeah, whatever needs to happen. And then I think um, to what your point of maintaining the stuff we already have my vision would be there. So there would be somebody that signs up to be the equipment person and somebody would sign up to be the um, growing season maintenance coordinator. So that could be a group of all, you could have a group of volunteers underneath the person or people. Um, oh, when I talked to Rob about this, he really encouraged me to have leaders with assistance or co-leaders right. because it's more fun and we're here to be yeah, partially to have you have a backup and um you know people you know it's a social thing too so um so this person um or these people could have uh periodic volunteers and they could be these could be volunteers that really can't dig you know yeah. or can't don't have the physicality to be able to prune so um and I don't know how we would manage the list of what needs to be done. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I have a good enough, we can put our heads together and figure that out. But um, there's stake and arbor time management. Like there's, you know, stakes hanging all over the place that we really need to do. Ties hanging off well. Yeah, it's not good. 
Um, and they should only be on there for a year, right? Correct. Yeah. And then um, track and remove the mesh trunk guards. And that's a little bit species oriented. The elms, the lindens, and the um, plane trees are like, you know, so um, those, those are um, every once in a while, I like pull over the side of the road and take some off. But there needs to be like a more systematic method on that. Um, and just if there's, you know, eyes on the trees, just to communicate with Rich and then figure out what needs to be done in weeding and remulching. Mm -hmm. And uh, just example, like we planted a bunch of trees in front of the synagogue, their maintenance people came and loaded mulch all over it. And um, yeah. it looks like somebody went back and and did that job, clear them, clear them up, like talk to the synagogue and, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that could be a person, a group of people. Um, and then as far as the uh, the planting end of it, so right now, Sue and I are kind of meeting together and um, developing the, the tree tracker. No, 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 no. That's okay. no, um, and um, so I will Actually, need... Jen, yeah. if we move to the other side, side right? nice. they can still see Perfect, it, right? great. Can you still see? Great. Yes. Okay. I don't know if Rich can. No, I'm fine. I can, I'm okay. listening. Um, so... Uh, we've got volunteer coordinators. Paul does Wednesdays. Vicky does the week uh, Saturdays, and I think that's staying. Yeah. Um, and then, um, like the dig safe processor is a whole other thing. It's not a huge job, I don't think, but it is a job. And um, right now, I think Felicia's the only person yeah. who knows how to do it. But we need to move that. Yeah, I can ask her. Back to Northampton. Yeah. In New Hampshire. I'd be yeah. interested in looking at that. Doing the dig sit, do it, processing yeah. them. Okay. But Rob started to tell me when he was out with me on some setbacks how, to, how yeah. that happened. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> but I only have about this much of, you know, the knowledge of me. But I'm sure it's a, a process I can connect with them and you guys. And yeah, and Alicia could probably. Um, you go to a site, put the stake in, right. you, you take the picture, them. but you have to label the picture in a specific way, a standardized way, and then I, I, I don't know I, I, could, I that. could probably go with you, actually. That might be helpful because that's kind of uh, one of the things that I review before. I don't necessarily always review them, but I, they end up going directly to a clerk. Right. So a clerk uh, at the building commissioner's office used to work with Beth Willard, who used to work at DBW, still processes all, everything. So I'd be more than happy to, to if you're willing to do it, yeah. work with you. So it's right. pretty much the same the way it is. And that that's something that I do as well. Yes. When I go and stick the stuff back. Yeah, so you actually know how to do this already. I mean, you take photographs and... Right. So. Yeah, but the bigger thing but is, is, the, is the, the pro actually the process, getting right? it to mm -hmm. happen. Like, yeah. And the I, don't do that. Yeah. I would I would send you Christina or whoever puts the stakes in the ground would send you pictures with with the address and then you would process it digitally and get it to Beth Willard yep. and there's some way and then we do have to go back around and this yeah. was a mistake I had that I realized uh, that uh, needed uh, to happen after the dig <laughs> safe. Somebody has to know when the dig safes have been completed and then go back around and look at them to, to see Did if they, they pass. Yeah, do we need to okay. move the stakes? And and here here's here's a, a shortcut for us. Do you think we could get dig safe to let us know whether it passed or not rather than us driving around? Okay. All right. Well what dig safe does is dig safe is uh I we call dig safe and use my account actually, or I call them or we use them and we have an online portal. And what happens is that dig safe doesn't dig safe only communicates you if there's something that they they can't find the stake of the location you're talking about. Okay. The way that I find out whether they passed or not is when the other superintendents actually sign off on the permits. Oh, so, so there's a superintendent so there a, who goes around and says, okay, this got a blue mark. So they have a staff. So this is how, so Dig Safe works two ways. Dig Safe is uh, five one one. It's for all of New England. Um, there are most of the utilities, all of the major utilities like electrical, uh, electric, gas, telecommunications, oh, and Verizon are all in Dig Safe all through New England. 
There are many other utilities that are not dig safe members, though. Northampton happens to be not a dig safe member, oh. which means that every time we need a marking for a water, sewer, or stormwater line or some other infrastructure that we own, there has to be a trench permit pulled. Oh, and that's why Rob got involved. Yes. Yeah, so, so Alicia or Alicia sends the spreadsheet that's generated from all the locations and the photographs you've taken. That ends up actually going to Beth Willard. Right. Beth Willard makes uh, contacts Dig Safe for all the information. Each location gets a unique ID number. That unique ID number is then transferred to a trench permit. And then the trench permit is issued by the Department of Public Works. And that's where you see the sign. Yeah. And then the water superintendent or the uh, sewer division foreman will contact me and tell me if there is a water or sewer or stormwater utility issue where we have to move the stake. And if he contacts me, then I go out and I move the stakes. Gotcha. Little to the left, little to the right, or I just call Jen and say, we mm -hmm. can't plant there, we've got to move it. Mm -hmm. okay. So unfortunately, there's this, you know, Massachusetts, it's just great because there's this little extra step. Most other states don't have trench permits. We have a trench permit because we have Megan's law. Which is a good thing, um, you know. So uh, there was a girl that fell into a trench mm -hmm. and was uh, and died mm -hmm. because the trench was completely uncovered because there was no trench regulation. So mm -hmm. they made the trench permit mm -hmm. policy, and uh, every community in Massachusetts has to adhere to this on private and public property. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. so, so that so again, what we've been doing is fine. It's just like we have this extra step yeah. that requires our utilities to be notified. So if you were to call dig safe, you're not going to get a water mark. You're not going to get a sewer mark. And that happens a lot still, to believe it or not. People forget to get trench permits, especially contractors that don't mm -hmm. work in Northampton. They just assume that Northampton is, their utilities are covered by dig safe, which they're not. Mm -hmm. So. And the other fly in the ointment here is, is if we want to plant on X property, the dig safe has to be done like yeah. ballpark a month ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Even though you know it only takes you get 72 hours and they'll be out there to market, but just all the transfer of information. Right. So we have to be Secret like green. we have to be kind of like yeah. ahead of the game to do it because the, the trench permit is really the what the driver for that. So the trench mm -hmm. permit turnaround is about seven days. Mm -hmm. So in seven days' time, it should be marked, and we should know whether or not it's good to go. So usually, we would send groups of pictures. And, and to, the other thing to too is not to add, not to complicate it, but just for information, the trench permit expires in thirty days, along with the mm -hmm. dig safe marking. Mm -hmm. So what I have to do is I have to file for extensions. So I will just email the office and say, you know, these four trench permits with these numbers, please give us an extension, because we may not. Planting got canceled, it rained, I don't know, whatever, mm -hmm. something. Well, we don't have the stock. Uh, but use the marks stay pretty well. I mean, as long as there's no marks in the way, but like technically speaking, like if you were to dig into a gas main, something bad happened, yeah. Department of Workforce Labor Standards would be out here and they'd say, Where's your trench permit? Well, it expired. Well, that's not good. So we sort of like we have all these. There's a lot of just little nuances, but that's just a sort of like it's expired. Did they say it's expired? 30 days. They, they all expired yeah. 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. So we've always said we can ahead. Mm -hmm. yep. and we'll continue to do that. And in groups that are plant, kind of plantable, you, you know, together, like that's right. the other thing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a whole other layer of thinking. Like, yeah. okay, these are on this end of the yeah. neighborhoods, kind of is the way I think about it. Yeah. When I make which, which again was easy, which which was much easier when we had uh, neighborhoods that did it that had you know baking tree belt where you could just go, you know, we want right. to end trees and right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, it's fine. It's just there's a process behind it. so that. That whole process, if Alicia is to back out of, if we're Alicia not to continue to do that electronic format, we just have to figure out how, what's the best use of people's time to make that happen. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Beth Willard is not going anywhere, which is good. She's not retiring. I thought she might retire, but she's been really helpful. And she's, I have, I have an agreement with the building inspector. She's allowed to work a few hours uh, a week for us to do this. So. And what, what's the, the you're going to continue with your pizza, which is the yeah, so I'm going to send on. back trees yeah. and get pictures to the big safe coordinator. 
you know, stay get pictures. So, so Tom so, would consider being a dick safe coordinator. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right, I'll be a coordinator. What's a better word? Don't make me a manager. Okay. No, <laughs> there is no manager except I, I know the that. guy at the top. <laughs> He's, the He's the king, right? We'll make a little crown up here. Yeah. No, please don't. Yeah. Don't make me the race. Sir, three word. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be on live recording. Oh, whoops. <laughs> it's okay. Thank That's you. Very democratic of us. All, all, all forgiven. Okay, okay. good. Well, I forgot about that part. Um, so then the other, um, the other things I thought about, and we certainly can modify this. I'm not, these are just my, my way I thinking, but to me, I feel like there needs to be kind of two more, um, coordinators, a setback program coordinator, which could be, I mean, I think that's part of what you're doing, but I vision it as a, even, which you could just stay doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, there's a bigger picture of getting a group of volunteers to generate setbacks, like mm -hmm. whatever way that is. I don't, maybe at, you know, Arbor Day, they're out there with a the table talking to people or, kind of yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if if I mean it's not urgent, but um, that's the if setbacks are really what's gonna mm. keep dry having the best sites for trees in the future. Yeah. I mean, people could just and there's also you know, setback requests coming from, for instance, the forum online, mm -hmm. or for instance, Kent recently noticed in, in during a heat wave a particularly bad heat island that could be remedied with setback on Smith College property. So we started trying to contact Smith College management, facilities management. They didn't respond. Maybe they had a lot going on. So somebody to oversee, okay, so-and-so is trying to contact this place to initiate a setback. And then the coordinator would say, okay, we have these requests for setbacks. Some who's going out and talking to the homeowner um so somebody to kind of know what's going on with different scenarios of setbacks and recording where what the progress is you know january 4th bob haxby met neighbor um really mad and... waiting for <laughs> yeah, waiting yeah. for agreement wants this type of tree because then the coordinator would say yeah. would be the person to reach out probably to Jen saying, yeah. what do we have inventory or could we order this tree yeah. within this time frame to do this setback? And then once they're set telling the dig safe coordinator, all right, we have agreements for these. And so it's kind of tracking and documenting as well the information. I think that's what you mean by the larger picture. Yeah, and just because it takes a lot there. of it takes a lot of um takes somebody who knows what's going on all the time, you know. And it, Rob did like all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's impossible. I so I was it. doing all of that as you know last year, to, you know, getting back to people, getting the agreements, and I would put that information on a tree tracker, so, um, mm -hmm. Excel sheet. But I think that expanding the job would be communications. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had that great lawn sign, free home, uh, oh, yeah, free yeah. to a good home, yeah. really lovely sign. Um, and, you know, we can think of other things to do. Mm -hmm. And and I can, I can work on that as well. Okay. Yeah. So when you, let's say you have three places, and maybe we should rethink about how we talk to people mm -hmm. about trees, like, we can give you a, this would be appropriate for a small, medium, or large tree. I'll get back to you about what small, medium, or large trees we have, and then they could choose from that rather than driving it, oh, I really want a dogwood. 
I mean, I mean, maybe, yeah, 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 maybe, we, maybe we end up having some people that that's all they want. And, yeah. you know, and that what are we going to do about that? Right. But, right. Um, but if we frame it as small, medium and large and, and, you know, we and have we'll to check on species available. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I do that when I visit with my home. Oh, okay. that's great. Well, right. Over the expectations. So they're not, they're not. Yeah. Not one. Just with all the other limits we have. It, it can be really hard to get a specific species of tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the last group, or sorry, I don't want to move on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. That's There's awesome. That, that yeah. coordinator. So you'll like take ownership of the notes. I will. So, yeah. The um, mm -hmm. keeping up on anybody who's out working on things. And you know, I'd be willing to help with Kent, like Smith Cloud or something like that, and then report back to you okay. with where we are. It's just we have the workflow. It's been kind of scattered. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes yeah. we drop the, you know, somebody's working on it, and then I don't know, we get busy, and then mm -hmm. it just we lose it. So I, mean, like, I think that's that to we get under the load. Yeah, right. Tracking spreadsheet is really helpful. Yeah. So every yeah. time you do something, you just yeah. make a note in the note area. Yeah. And then just the communication of, you know, I think probably in planting season, mm -hmm. we would probably have to have at least a phone call like every uh, X yeah. amount of time. And, and here's something that's a, a break in the process is I couldn't find out whether people had sent in their agreement. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, the only yeah, way I can find that out is if I ask them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is there a way for me to contact where it goes to in the city? So that's you. Yeah. If it's okay. addressed to me, it goes, it gets to me. And then it gets put in one of those baskets over there. And then once it's planted, I mark mm -hmm. that it's been planted. And then I file them all. So how do I find out whether you've gotten the agreement? You have to send me an email. Yeah, but no. Yes, you can simplify the communication. Tree tracker right. would be great. We could put in a new column there that said a agreement sent, and it could get checked. Twice. Yes no. Would that work for you? Yeah, just got to find out where the tree tracker sheet is and have it. Okay. Oh, well, maybe email, but we should use a group it. at no, a time. I don't use it. I have my own. I don't use the tree tracker. Oh, okay. I, I to be honest with you, I don't have the bandwidth to, to yep. look at that sheet and okay. understand what's going on with it. I got the other end is the sheet that Kent's familiar with, the big sheet mm -hmm. that I deal with and mm -hmm. all the data entry. Yeah. Doesn't mean I can't do it. I just need to have it so it's in my a shortcut like so I can get it. So, so, so maybe open. I I physically come over here once a week and see if your basket is full of the you don't have to. I think I think if I can just I can do it. As long as I just can get to where I need to be, it's kind of hard because things have been all over the place. You need to get where you need to be um, electronic, electronic, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> be done in, in batches, like, like a, it's say funny, once a week, check it's, in. It's funny that which can we check you know, out? We don't yeah. get mail here, so it comes to the main office, so right. they call me and tell me there's mail, so that's how I get them, and then mm -hmm. I don't file them until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do one because the registry, if, you, if you've ever filed anything at the registry of deeds, um, I, I have to do deed research before it's filed to make sure that right. the people still own the property. Yeah. And then yeah. I have to put the uh, book and page number mm -hmm. uh, and, can uh, visit in the this. column. You physically go down to the courthouse to do each? No, I, no I can do it online. Oh, you can do it online. I can do it online, but I physically... But it's hours but of I, work. But it's well, not, it's not hours, but it, it depends. It's another step, right? It's just another step. Um, so is it more helpful for you if I go to the DPW and get those mailings? No, you can't go in there. The place is locked, so no, it's, just, it's easier oh. for me just to, okay. every time I get one, yeah. I will just go in the tree tracker and tick the box off and said it has been received, okay. if that's how we want to do it, whatever okay. you come up with. Or it would be easier for you to just put an email or a text? No, nope. nope. okay. it would be easier for me just to actually okay. check a little box. Okay. Okay. Email. All right. So when we set up, Sue and I are going to meet yep. and set up a new one, a new tracker for yeah. 2024 yep. before we actually use it okay we we should check with you to make sure because you added some things last time in for fall 23 on the tree track so i'm more than willing to meet with you or whatever, whatever yeah to works. look at it before yeah. we launch it so that yeah. christina would be easier just to do that and then oh, yeah. that way there okay. everyone sees it yeah right so if they know it's done and it saves you a trip from driving around and making yeah. a phone call saves me a trip okay. 
and then you know if you don't see it then that's when you can say hey rich did, you, yeah. did this come to you but if for people but, don't know the tracker sorry. is where when we have an address well first we put all the trees that we have in inventory and as trees get delivered we put them in the school sheet and then we assign locations to them the tracker. Mm -hmm. and then that's how we that's like public tracking the trees we have and where they're going to get. And then I so, take the ones that are like dig safe and ready, and I have my own Google Doc that I put them in groups, kind of in neighborhoods, and that's the way the plant list gets generated. Started. Yeah, the plant list just gets generated. We kept saying tree tracker, and I thought, you know what? Some people don't even know what the yeah. tree tracker is. I thought it was a software. No, software. no, yeah. no. It's the Google Sheet. Sure. And it's, it's Sue Locked Out. Put the trees the in there. So it's always created by. Unfortunately, yeah. you can't really sort it because the way it, it developed over time, Alicia developed it. And she developed it. We don't use all its features. It has these formulas so that you can, um, to eliminate re moving data in and out of it to do the dig safes. Mm -hmm. um, once you put a number on the dig safe and then it it goes to that information, it's put into a dig safe tab. Mm -hmm. So if you have 25 Barrett Street and Did you that, put one, that right you want the dig safe. This is this is what it looks like. And that's very colorful. And, the, and then that, yeah. that yeah. has to be transferred to or some of that information Rich, Any trees Rich that is looking for getting weren't planted yeah. right no well, i don't i don't think i don't think anything off of here. Yeah. Like, but you but you, that you that need to put cool. something into your spreadsheet yeah. yeah but we need to figure out a way of yeah. laying it out so yeah. that I, we can I just cut right cut what you need yeah. and just yeah. port so that over so that's sort of way to and yeah, they all all it's it's to it's to streamline that. Yeah. All these yeah. Tests, yeah. Like Everything's that. sort of so yeah. 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 organically yeah. 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 So the, the it's color they say through that all the like that. The tree species is in the middle. And then um yeah. And then can look at can we talk about who can access the the spreadsheet because sometimes I will input information assuming that you know everybody at Tree North Hampton has permission to look at the tree right tree, and then I find out later on oh no 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 that's not the case. So can well, we there's do another something? little piece where and Rich just, thought we should be that the setback request information should be a tab on a tree tracker, but that has to be manually updated. So, so there's the main sheet where the tree where the setback does People fill out a form online Is and it populates the Google sheet. Planted. And then he wanted us to, like, as they come in, move That's it awesome. into another sheet, mm -hmm. into the tracker. Totally Whereas maybe we could revisit track. that because that's like another thing you have to remember to keep up on. Whereas, and sometimes I'd see the, I'm not sure which one, if you were putting the notes in the tab that he created, or if you were putting the notes in the live sheet, the one that has the data that's coming right in. I think you were working the live one. Yeah, I know. Which I makes sense. Know. Have one place. Yeah. One place, absolutely. And then we can make a different tab within your spreadsheet, right? Mm -hmm. For yeah, setbacks. So it's yes. the live setback information, I don't know if we can make that come into the tree tracker. Okay. No. No. no that, that's like a city. That's a city. Spreadsheet. That's a city. The tree tracker is between our hand and volunteer spread. Yep. Okay. Is, um, so can, it's so not owned by the city. Can we then? input our data into the tree tracker and make it available to everybody, yeah. for instance, on this committee. So you can give permission to everybody it. to be able to see it. Yeah, you can be an and editor, they, yeah, right, right. Right. owner, editor, viewer. Is that back what you're saying? No, for the tree, oh, the tree tracker. Tree tracker. It's always been kind of guarded because if anything, if somebody changes something, by mistake, yeah, yeah, good mm -hmm. point. Um, it, the more people you add in, the more you don't know who changed what, and tricky. And then you might have to go back to a different version and then drive out to the, all the different sites to see if that tree has been planted or not. Right. Yeah, I mean, so you can create, but can people just work. view it? Sure, view it, yeah. So uh, we really need to limit what you're saying. We need to limit Edit. the editor, yeah, yeah. right? Right, 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 right. Okay. So, for example, like 
me just personally, because of who I am, I do not want to mess in there. So I just text and email and call soon. I would want to do that. And then, yeah. That would be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would, you know, just because it would yeah. be great to have a, you know, gestalt, get a sense of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. And it'll be simpler. Normally, um, a tree tracker is one season at a time. Mm -hmm. And we use the same tree tracker for two seasons. So it's much mm -hmm. larger than it needs to be and much yes. more complicated. Yeah, and so colorful. And Alicia put the colors in because somebody was looking at it. It was oh, it, it was the line. dig safes, like which okay. sometimes it's helpful to know which dig safe it was in. Yeah. Because then you know um what the date was mm -hmm. that so there is a it is helpful to know which dig safe group yeah. it was in mm -hmm. and if it's been a because the other thing is it hasn't been assigned a dig safe yet right like we could have active trees in there that we're citing but they haven't the dig safe hasn't been processed yet so it's a matter of like figuring out the best way to if there were more subtle colors, that would help our <laughs> Plus, I think a lot of that information uh, would get archived, couldn't it? So we could yeah, at this a point have of, of just what's yeah, or even over the I past year. Hope by this meeting to have cleaned it up. I uh -huh. um in I'm in fundraising and December's just insane and oh of course yeah, right. during my program and covering and another program. So yeah. Don't, yeah. don't don't yeah. yeah. So yeah. I have but we're gonna have up. a whole new no, sheet yeah. though. It's going to be yeah, it's going to be tree tracker left those twenty twenty four. have thirty yeah. rows because mm -hmm. that's the trees we have, mm -hmm. and then we'll start a list of um, addresses, mm -hmm. and then as we populate the trees, as we get more trees in, then we'll plug in those mm -hmm. locations. I'm I'm wondering if maybe we need uh, just a consultation with the data geek. Like with the, we uh, might have like maybe here. these young people over here. <laughs> we might have them here. <laughs> <laughs> could could uh, meet with Sue and make her job easier and clean up the tracker. And uh, and the kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we could have a little tech meeting. Since I'm the only one who volunteers on the commission, we could have a meeting on the data and how like the data flow mm -hmm. and. Oh uh, yeah, that would be really welcome. Because okay. Alicia spent a lot of time coming up with these formulas to get things. So if you put an address and you put one, the exact one, it would be in that list so that she could then just copy and paste the list rather than having to find this row and then this row and then this row. And I also think it would be a lot easier if we could if we could sort. Yes. The document, um, yeah. the way she has it set up, you can't sort. I work in Excel all day long and I'm constantly resorting things to look at them in different ways. And then you can just resort it and have all the big safe ones together. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's how I work in spreadsheets. And then in that meeting could be included the how do we figure out how to uh, put the planting lists into yeah. an Excel sheet. And then you have to tell me how to do that. And, and, and also how to get rich the information you need right um in a, in a format that's easy for you to just exactly point to yeah yeah right 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 that part that, of that. should be included right. in the tech it's almost like another part. column if you could just sort on planting date this right then you could just copy and then um send Expl that, and... that portion mm -hmm. yeah. anyway we're getting in the weeds okay. here well we got some users and some input people and mm -hmm. just yeah connect, connect those mm -hmm. yeah. well okay so improvements just Miles, Kent, I, I really, and Tom. I really like the tech meeting. Flow chart. Oh, I nice. think we should actually make, we should actually codify that into some, uh, like, you know, use word or Graphics. what you can do right now, like a picture of it. Yeah, right. So, so, I don't remember which one has a flow chart. One of them has a flow chart. Yeah. I think it's Excel, actually. Somebody better than me. Does anybody know? I don't know how to do it. Does, yeah. does anybody want to volunteer to? Yeah, I can make a digital version. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that would yes. be helpful. So I think that really sort of explains. Uh, yeah, that's actually um, not, right. not to steal your thunder, but some other community was asking me how we go about getting all the trees planted. Yeah. And what is the framework? And mm -hmm. and I was explaining it to him on a piece of paper. <laughs> and now I don't. Whoa. Now, if you don't mind if I steal your intellectual property, then you're done with <laughs> I'd like to follow it to uh, use it for another community that's asking And it's interesting talking to communities who have vigorous big programs and 
Um, I think it was Greenfield I was talking to, and they basically have a Rob. Yeah. Retired landscape person with body. That's uh, Rob and Alicia. When Rob Knowledge was going to leave, was doing they developed that. So it's it's pretty oh, specific. Yeah. It's not as as yeah, broad broad picture, yeah. but we can make a copy of that. We also have a flow chart of that Rob and and it's Alicia. Yeah, this is electronic somewhere. Yeah, it it was electronic. It got sent out to us. I think Maybe I, I can ask Alicia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. Let me write myself a note. Uh, it's a big meeting before the planning season. Just street North Hampton, and they made that flow chart. I'll ask her about that. Um, people, people ask me all the time, all through the Commonwealth, like, how do you deal with volunteers? I mean, mm -hmm. it's gonna drive you crazy. Well, that's one of our topics, right? right? And, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm looking at this flow chart. I'm looking at this I'm like, this is great. I'm like, the volunteers are awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there, there was unfortunately a. Um, Stigmatism a little bit, maybe it might be I don't know, sorry, stigma or a stigma in regards to a lot of the tree wardens that are in different parts of the state do not work with volunteers. Mm -hmm. They don't have volunteer commissioners. Mm -hmm. They um, there is, and if they do, their symbiotic relationship doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important. This is a really good way to send a message. Because there are tree advocates all over the Commonwealth that are just mm -hmm. trying to do the same mm -hmm. thing. That we, People that want to help, and then the DPW is yeah. letting them. Yeah. So it's a mindset, really. To change. It is kind of a mindset. It's also, you know, the other thing too is that we we also have to remember that we we all we live and work um, in, in a place that supports this. Mm -hmm. A lot of communities don't have the funding resources. I mean, North Hampton's been blessed. They they give us. You know, three quarters of a million dollars for tree care a year. I mean, that's we have a line item in the budget just for tree purchases, yeah, yeah. tree purchases yeah. and yeah. materials. So, so, I mean, but again, it's this is helpful. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, I think it was important when Rob oriented me to help me understand the perspective of the tree warden as well, and maybe other tree wardens could benefit from finding a way to convey that. You know, tree if, that volunteers are representatives in a sense, and that if you leave like a mess, don't clean up, um, and leave it kind of ragged looking, that it reflects on a person's professional reputation, mm -hmm. and that you know. a lot of different things going. On. The other thing too is that you have to remember that most tree wards in Massachusetts are strictly they have multiple jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a class of 54 people that graduated from the Mass Qualified Tree Warden training. There was only two people in that class that raised their hand and say that all they did was trees. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has another job. Mm -hmm. So the bandwidth of the individuals that the volunteers may be dealing with other communities is, uh, you know, is 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 up and down. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to have some trust. You have to you have to be able yeah. to trust us and. Yeah, again, but you have, to have, you have to have buy-in at all levels. So that's right. the other thing, too. Right. You don't have buy-in at all levels. Like, I worked here for a long time, and there was no buy-in from the Polar Force Department about tree planting. You know, all we did respond to stuff that fell in the road. Mm -hmm. Or we just went and showed up and just cut things down. Mm -hmm. We didn't plant anything in the ground. We didn't talk to residents. We just showed up with the DPW. We're going to do what we do doing with Uber. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. You know, you want you want the tree in your house? Or you, you know, I mean, that's the kind of attitude it was. It's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole dynamic shift over time. Um, but anyway, that's all another rabbit hole we can go down. And we don't want to waste any more time. So. We're well, moving. Yeah, yeah just, we I'm not sure yeah. we're done. We're okay. done with time. Um, the other uh, couple places that we, well, this, the planting day leaders, we should probably codify that a little more clearly mm -hmm. um, so we can share the burden a little bit more. I mean, I like being a planting day leader, but sometimes, you know, I'm like you want to travel. doing all that stuff. You <laughs> did Wednesday and Saturday the input. Yeah, I did. Season. I did. And okay. that's a lot. Yeah. 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 So like yeah. follow all the tools. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like it, but uh, yeah, there's a lot. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. We can spread the wealth there because that's not a real heavy lift. You just have to be able to make decisions on the ground too. And I'm happy to work with people about you know, what kind of decisions you have to make. Particularly, you need to know about the markings for Dig Safe. And I, in my mind, I'm trying to, 
figure out a eat like a one page sheet with visuals that we use just to get information out about if it looks like this, you need to move it over five feet. Or it needs, you know, there's some things that I'm learning too that I spent many phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean, I mean, I mean, it's right. Oh, this is what it looks like. Here's you the can picture. pull a tree out of the bag and it's got yeah, you know, a number of different roots growing around yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. How much of it? You're comfortable chopping off. Awesome. Yes. What happened to Jay? He was not around this fall. Is he going to come back? He had a knee. Oh, he's yeah. He helpful. had a knee thing going on. Okay. He yeah. was so helpful with yeah. the roots. Yeah. So yeah, during yeah. the the plantings, it's the staking and the roots that are the big yeah issues. yeah the stake yeah the stakes. We should talk about that as a general thing okay. in a minute about whether we should just start staking. And, you know, have a supply of stakes and, and arbor cords. Yeah. And that's yeah. just part of the process. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was just it. talking about the days, the day of planting. Oh, stake. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move the right. stake, right, you know, right. one foot in. Right, right, right. Oh, right. oh, the, the day. That, that is like tree, about planting this coordination. The yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Theoretically, oh, right. we could probably <laughs> avoid most of the moving of stakes if we tighten up the dig safe thing. Okay. And somebody's going back to look at it's it. It's consistent visit to the site. Yeah. To, prior to the volunteers showing mm -hmm. up rather than showing up like, oh yeah, the dig safe. Yeah, I just gas line going I just, right where it's taken. Yeah, yeah. Do? And it's different for parallel gas lines underneath the tree belt versus service to buildings or houses. Mm -hmm. That's a, the, like whether we plant, whether we have to move, there's a little bit different. And whether you smell methane or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. So how many people would you envision yeah. needing for, for, for day of leaders? I mean, it's like five people. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a good, you know, we could just rotate or, you know, be in pairs sometimes and you know, if somebody, it's mostly if you can't make it, then we can still have a right. tree planting. And, I mean, there still have to be picking up the equipment. Yeah. And bringing it. Yeah. To, yeah. Well, no, actually, you don't bring it to the different. So we we have to bring shovels it. and the and the colored buckets. Yeah. That's right. And the best. And the tarp. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So I the done first day I will do that again. Yeah. You okay. know. So if we can get a group so of five people. Yeah. We do. We see the man. I think I've done that probably. Bob. I could do that. Yeah. You have right. Bob's done it. Yeah. yeah. Even if we had six people, I don't think. Paul could do it. Okay. I don't think, I, as far as like, like the tree science route, thing, no, I, I, don't, I don't think. I think we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Really? Miles? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Great. And, and, you know, we can go out together too or whatever. You know, we can. Yeah. yeah. Out. Because it'd be, be sure we all share the same information. Yeah. We all have the same basic knowledge. Right. Right. And pairs right. are good. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. If we can go in pair, that'd be great. Yeah, and if we can, yeah. I, I ran into this. This is what I had to do. This yeah. is a, yeah. I, I don't know if I know enough about okay. the, the, yeah. the, okay. the plan. We can work you up to. Now that we're planting in so many just yeah. places, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We'll probably yeah. yeah. Even with less trees, it's only mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. right, right. And sometimes, you know, really planting dates. Sometimes when I'm doing a planting, like I hardly plant at all. Right. I'm like going around yeah. answering questions. I'm gathering buckets into one place. Yeah. I mean, I really make sure, you know, I go by the trees that were planted, even if I wasn't there, to make sure. A lot of times, the plastic tags don't get taken off the trees, mm -hmm. and you know, that's what. Yeah. And the extra little raking around, yeah, clean up. Make, looking at it and thinking. Yeah. If you had somebody who really wanted to criticize us, could they find? Yeah. For yeah. Reason? yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's yeah. a couple of people around right. um, each neighborhood who are really against tree planting. So mm -hmm. right. I'm going to leave it nice mm -hmm. and tidy. Right. No, that is. <laughs> <laughs> At Tom's neighborhood. Right. She's got it. Yeah. And then the last. <laughs> oh, right. And kind of the last, um, this is kind of the intermittent job that I thought is, kind of, we have these special plantings that come up and, um, you know, there certainly would need to be this, you know, good communication with me. Right. Um, but, um, oh, the rotary and yeah, yeah. For example, um, I thought I one just sitting here. 
Um, for so example, January, we'll have road. We'll want to have somebody start working with the Rotary Club to um, end the schools. They did. They did. Or, school or yeah. maybe we'll do ice pond or something right. like that. Right. And just be the person. Yeah. Or we have like a. There's a person on a Grant Street. Grant F. Grant Ave. Oh, right, right, right. Um, there's, I was there citing a tree. This neighbor comes out totally on board to get her whole neighborhood willing to plant trees. It's mostly setback trees, but some, she, you know, I took down her name and number. She's willing to have like a neighborhood planting, but somebody needs to be that person to, mm -hmm. you know, to Can go. Connect them to us. Yeah, just, yeah, to, to, just to be the face and then do an initial meeting. And then if I needed to come or somebody else needed to come to talk to them, um, we could and just temper, you know, somebody could identify the people who are willing to do setback plantings in their yards and whether it was small, medium, or large. And then, you know, just and be the person. The setback coordinator. Right. If right, the setback right. agreements involved. Right. And making, a, and the dig safe to make sure that everything's ready for that day. And then on those days, you've got you know, large numbers of volunteers, they have you have to figure out where they're gonna park and communicate that to them. Like have their leader, they have a leader who does the communication amongst them, but you have to be their liaison right to the tree program to um be the point away. person. It'd be a lot of back and forth emailing yes. with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way my mind works, I I I, I read checklist and the other topic checklist, you know, for the for the people going mm -hmm. out you know, just so you can cover everything. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I have some thoughts like uh um there's uh on Bridge Road, St. Mary Cemetery, there's a sidewalk that people use there. Yeah. Um that's uh from North Elm, no, yeah, North Elm towards uh Route 9. No, towards no. it's Joe towards, Fence. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Towards towards uh North King Maple. Street. That's what I'm saying. There's a oh. huge place to plant there. And I talked to Rich about it. He said, well, we should contact them first. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's public land, but it adjoins the Catholic Church Cemetery. So you've got to do a little bit of yeah. But that right. So somebody could take uh, mm -hmm. okay, take that on. You know, it's That's just a special plan. Exactly. You can have a list way. and and you know people, yeah. So that's just another I've been doing area that when we you know absolutely need someone. Mm -hmm. But that would be a good thing if there was somebody who'd be willing to do that. And have I've a group of people that are willing too, to do like it. I've been doing coordinating. Making sure we have Girl Scouts. At least like one time a season we have the Girl Scouts there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um so you reach out to the groups rather than the groups reaching out they to must us. They reach out to me. Okay. And unless once they've done it, I reach out to them. Yeah. Would you like to come back? Mm -hmm. Right. Ideally, we like to have people who come back. But then we have but, to figure out a special planting where the Girl Scouts can be. Right. I know it can't be like just random. Right over. Yeah. yeah. So Bridge Street Cemetery was where we right. did and that this it, And it's we want to have the community involved. Um, so and it, the Girl Scouts like now five Girl Scouts and a leader and me plant one tree. Oh yeah. yeah Versus right. Right. oh yeah. Right. I can right. go out well I can that. plant that tree. Yeah. Right. But that's not the point. Yeah. Right. The point is that we keep so we had various school groups and things like that. And if you get the school groups to come back, the teenagers and the high schoolers, mm -hmm. then you'll actually start planting trees <laughs> beyond mm -hmm. what you would without the groups. Yeah. You mean you don't want like to just throw grubs and <laughs> <laughs> sitting and dancing they it, it's so important for the community to have them um yeah. well how do, you su how do you suggest we yeah. find somebody to do that so this what david lucan from the um commission has been doing a little bit of mm -hmm. sleuthing out and finding people and maybe we could ask him if he'd be willing to do a little bit more of that because mm -hmm. um, i kind of have a running list of potential places that would need contacts like there's also um by the uh by village hill that um light industry three uh l3, l3. Yeah. yeah yeah so there's like a lot that's a very heavily walked sidewalk mm -hmm. and and that's you'd have to talk you, you have to figure out where the right-of-way is but even if it isn't right away 
you could have trees at the bottom of that hill by the sidewalk. We could probably plant 10 trees all along it, you know? Mm -hmm. But that would involve like somebody figuring out at, you know, it, but to ask again on the tree ward. Right, to, to find out where the, where the, the right setback way. is, where the right of way is, and then also follow if we need to, if we need another couple feet to meet with somebody at the business and say, this is what we're doing, you know. We did that at um, Cooley Dickinson Hospital in the front. We planted mm -hmm. that whole island. We had the bus stop. Um, but that was like a lot of, you know, you got to meet them, you got to draw, you know, yeah. you don't always have to draw a plan, but that was. So. And I worked with O'Connell Companies, which is a very large property owner in the area, and I got them to agree in an email that they would do these setbacks, and then they have won't return the form. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have the bandwidth to keep right, right. bandwidth them. So somebody could make a meeting with that person and bring a lot of so many other things, things out, you know, scan it, you know, missing opportunities like that. Yeah. Um, especially a company like O'Connell, they own a lot of property. If we get a relationship with them, um, that's why we don't they, have, we talk a lot of low income people. Have two people, you know, at each level. Yes. You know, so you have like a right. group that you can yeah. say, right. I can't I, I can't get them. Right. Yeah. Right. Would it also be part of that special uh, tree planting coordinator position? have some uh, media coverage or some outreach that way? Oh, I think, don't we have to go through the mayor's office when we so do it that? Depends. If I mean, Tree Hampton does it, you know. Tree Hampton Hampton does it but if okay. you are if you are peddling a, a city program, you probably ought to just, like, we need to send the mayor's office an email. Okay. So the way that I do it now is if I'm going to do some kind of appearance of some sort, if I'm going to be... Um, I just send an email with making more of it. And if they don't want me to do it, they will send me an email back. So that's how I handle it. it. Seems to work out just fine. But we need to be aware of that layer. Yeah. That we yeah. need to. Yeah, because they, yeah. They're, they're, what do you, what's an example of when you've had to do that? Uh, so, for example, uh, they they uh, want, I needed to go testify in front of, in a committee in a state house. So I had to send an email to the mayor's office to let them know. But I was going to do that because all of a sudden the tree warden from the campaign shows up and the mayor finds out through our state representative. Um, so I was thinking more of like uh, in the kids that uh, right. So um, we have a we have a, I wouldn't say a gag order, but anytime anything, there's only two people in this department that are DPW that talk to the media. It's the director and myself. But I always run it up the flagpole. So if we were going to run something. Or we wanted something posted that had anything to do with the city on Facebook, or if like we'd like the Urban Forestry Commission doesn't have its own social media account, um, the mayor's office has the media account. The mayor handles that kind of thing. So when we do uh, our tree whip and our day event giveaway, which is in conjunction with Tree Northampton, that's sort of something that gets run through the mayor's office. I write a press release and then it goes yeah. through. Um, so that's probably a better, well, Donna, that's a better example. That's a better example. Donna fusses, edits it a little, and then it. Can, so, then it so if you wanted to, let's say, advertise setback tree plantings on uh, in some other fashion than the way they are presently, that's what I was thinking. Then, then, that, we, that, just, or then we would just send an email and say, no, we're no, gonna, you know, promote our setback tree planting initiative uh, in these media outlets. Please let me know if. Uh, you have any questions or comments? Thank you. That's it. Okay, awesome. good. So we've already got a person that can do that essentially in the in the mayor's office. And yes, and, 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 yes, and then yes, and yes. then um, there's also Tree Northampton has Facebook, and we just put yeah. stuff up there. Which and actually is if, probably if there's something controversial. We check with Rich because yeah. we don't want to we don't want to cause friction or controversy right. for the yeah. city. So if there was something beyond, like <laughs> saying like. Oh, Girl Scouts, Girl Scout lead, attention Girl Scout yeah, leaders, it's, it's, time to schedule tree planting. We could just do it as Tree Northampton. And that's not, the city is, doesn't really care about that. No. If we're going to say, hey, everybody, let's lobby the mayor to do this, mm -hmm. then we could yeah. create, we might want to talk about, right. does or, this meet our shared goal? Or, or if we're going to. This effort, or is this going to just slow us down if we're going to initiate some different type of program or a change in what we're presently doing and we're using city funds 
you know, for one as being partnered with the city, then we'd have to contact the mayor. But as far as what we're doing right now, like Sue could post all day long that, you know, free trees to good homes, right? The billboards. Yeah. You can okay. post that forever. That's not an issue. Yeah. And it's the, just when you're saying like. coordination is, right. is the tree Northampton function. So maybe we could find some back between Northampton outside of this group who will take on the um, job of contacting all these groups. Okay. Unless you think that Dave Lucan will do it. Well, Tree Northampton is, is Rob, Alicia, me, oh. and Bob Axby. Oh, no, you <laughs> mean, I you mean, there more people. <laughs> it's you a mean the, the volunteer group, like, put it out of the blast. The Maybe there's somebody else, like, need yeah. somebody yeah. Yeah. to, to like to do the leaderships. Yeah. yeah. Coordinating groups. And the other time that I can think of recently that we had to do the mayor was, um, we do this big planting at Leeds, mm -hmm. and there was a going to be a um, a notice to like a flyer made to recruit volunteers, and also she wanted to put it in their school newsletter, so she wanted me to write it up. Considered. So I wrote it up, and we had all these cooperating partners, and one of them was this DPW. So that had to go through. Rich, the Donna, the another project yeah. that's coming up. There's a group in um in Williamsburg mm -hmm. that's obtained grant money and they're putting together an entire program of events to, to commemorate the memorialize the what? um 150th yeah. anniversary yeah. of a gigantic the um, dam broke mm -hmm. and yeah. killed all these people. And they want to plant a tree for each person who was killed. Wow, that's wonderful. Along a green, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. along a greenway. So that's a perfect part example. Of part of a greenway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to be involved. They actually put Tree Northampton on their flyer. <laughs> we <laughs> had time to <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Which is yeah. fine. You got a little excited, I guess. Yeah, who was that? Something. I was at a Gabby Immerman. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was at the um, Friends of Northampton Trails annual meeting. You probably saw her there. She came, she, she's doing the rounds. She came to the Urban Forestry, Urban Forestry yeah. Commission and told yeah. us about it. So she's doing an amazing job yeah. raising awareness, and that'll be planting. A special, a special yeah. yeah. Yeah, special planning coordinator need right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Did we go All off right. topic? No. Did we cover everything? Well, it's ten thirty-five. Just for a time check. What else? What else you have? Know, um, that was that. Uh, let's see. The other. Let's see. Oh, I just need the the list of the stump removals. Whenever you can get it to me. Yeah, I have that on my. Um, and uh, I think we talked about. We'll just be in touch about the nursery visit. Yes. Um, and we already talked about the tree tracker. Can I ask you a question yeah. about the nursery visit? Mm -hmm. Um having gone there a couple of times with Rob, it's um it's a difficult job being there, you know, trying to figure out the trees and making your way around. How how do we figure out what trees we're gonna get from there and what trees we're gonna order from the tree nursery in New York? Does it all have air room? Uh so typically Sort of we, in the past, we've had a sense of where we're going to plant that year, uh -huh. and we basically buy blocks of underwire trees, medium size, and a few large trees. And then Chestnut Ridge, what we've done with them is that we, I well, wait, what so we buy the the um underwire buy, your first week that you just said from Emerson Nursery, yes, okay, yes, but on occasion when we we've had underwires from Chestnut Ridge when we have a specific project. Mm -hmm. So the deal with Chestnut Ridge is it's easier for us to have a large quantity of plantings and do all bare root. Mm -hmm. And that's how we accomplish like the Ryan Road project, mm -hmm. Jackson yeah. Street, the Lead School project. In front of tree, uh, uh, historic, historic North Hampton. Hampton. We planted a lot of uh, bare root exactly. trees. Okay. And so all the bare root comes from Chestnut Ridge. Yes. And is it less expensive for us to get the trees from Chestnut Ridge yes. than mm -hmm. Emerson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Problem is you have to plant them right away. You, get, you gotta get them in the ground in a few days. So you've gotta have all the dig sites lined up, all the coordinators for 
a large number of trees yeah. happen within yeah. three days. Yeah. So that would be a job like this spring if we were to do a bunch of uh, succession trees at Village O and also do Ice Pond Drive. Mm -hmm. We would like to bear root because we could easily plant mm -hmm. like right. 40 trees. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be 40 trees of potential. Again, yeah. you want to do another. On the 150, uh, 200 next year? Yeah, on, our, on average, we've done about 60, 60, 120 bare roots a year. Is what we've done right because now. we've done them in the fall, too. Yes, we do them in the fall. We did spring yeah. and fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been wondering about really small trees, about like planting whips, because it seems like there's a lot of problems with the roots in the larger transplants. And like my understanding is trees seem to do well when they grow where they're planted. So is there like is there anything else that makes that hard to plant like sheep and mm -hmm. numerous whips that are easy to handle? It's just the fact that they'll get damaged, they'll get demolished. What about like cages or tubes or something? You could do that, but then you have a whole new maintenance element that you have to sort of like try to figure so out. Keep track of the yeah, and upsize everything and and then constantly. Those require like oh, they'll require mulching every single year for the first. 10 years of their life because they'll just get stream trimmed right into the ground. Um, and they also, if you have a small whip like that, a dog, dog urine will kill it. Mm. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, I saw some hackberries actually in Portland, Maine, that had a, a, a light colored ring all the way around the base of them because there are five trees that are in the center of Portland that are beautiful and they're they're good sized trees, yeah. you know, that the dogs just use them constantly. Yeah. So they have their own. So I, I mean I'm just it's kind of a side story, but you know, the other thing too is that uh, their desiccation probably would be mm -hmm. the risk of desiccation would be greater because they just don't Giant. have yeah, they don't have the capacity to withstand the tough urban environment. Which is a but, shame because they but overtake the ones we plant mm -hmm. but your point is well noted because they do it's easier to start from the very beginning but it's not the urban right. environment is too harsh i mean possibly we could do that if let's say for example um at like uh uh oh, lead school for example there's this huge field that they just mow with no one uses it i guess they used it for during covid yeah. so they put tents yeah. out there but you know that's a positive. If we did have kind of like reforestation projects, kind of like that might be a possibility. Yeah, there was is, one yeah. of the uh, there was a golf course that became conservation land, mm -hmm. and Rich has been involved with reforestation there. But the, you said they the deer pressure is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the deer pressure. The deer's deer's right. So I mean, urban bitty ones. Urban tree trees are not the deer pressure. It's more it's the human pressure. Right. I mean, you, you could walk around with a dibble bar like all day long in a sack full of whips and you could plant a thousand trees by yourself, you know, um, but it, they, you know, but you have to be in a place like Lee School where it's not going to get more well, crap. Yeah, and, but but then you have to go on and mow the whole thing, get a mow around all of them mm -hmm. because the grass will just take take over. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, so there's there's pros and cons. Um, the the best part is that the tree starts from the beginning right there, and then if it's successful, you've got a really nice tree, you know. Um, but then the cons are all those other things, and you know the pros are with the larger trees is that the trees are established, they're already there, um, uh, and they you know hopefully they'll do well. But uh, the cons is is that uh, from a the standpoint of getting the trees there, the amount of maintenance requires, like the amount of the carbon footprint, let's put it that the carbon footprint to plant a two and a half inch tree is very different than planting a whip that's the size of my finger. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's pros and cons to both. But yeah, I, I like working with bare root because it's easy for us to transport and it's easy to plant. And I'll be honest with you, you get a lot more fibrous root matter. Mm -hmm. Grow bags have nice fibrous root matter. B and B, I could guess like yeah. B and B dress, it's just a whole other ball game. And it's huge and it's unwieldy. And even John's the balls that we had this year, those are typically inch and a quarter, inch and a half trees. That's a 20 to 25 gallon container mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. I mean I watched some trees going this year in Malden that were like this. Mm -hmm. And they have a backhoe dropping in the hole. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I, I, the, I used to plan like, oh, yeah, it's yep. not that time. But, uh, well, I just also just <laughs> anecdotally have noticed like 50% flops of the soil in that, in those uh, B and B's, there, there's nothing in it. It's empty. soil. It's empty. Right. Yeah. And then you they cut off the big yeah, uh, that's true. Structural roots. Yeah. I there's just not a ton of fibrous roots growing. It just anecdotal. Yeah, really no, and then like and it. then you have to spend a lot of time massaging that root ball to figure out what's in there. Really? Right. Um, and if it comes from some place like down south where it's all like red clay, then yeah. you can spend yeah. your whole time planting just that one tree yeah. and yeah. other people. Yeah. And and you have you instead of planting a grow bag, which you know, two people could plant a Two grow bags together easily in a morning by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what's the difference between grow bag and the bag and grow up? So the B and B are field grown. They are so they're field grown, meaning they're planted, like you mentioned, planted in the ground. Yeah. They're usually typically larger than this size, but they're planted in the ground. They're field grown, and then they're harvested using a tree spader. Mm -hmm. And then, depending upon the size of the caliber of the tree, yeah, they determines the size of the ball and the size of the basket it goes into. That gets dropped into a basket, laid in with burlap, gets tied up, and then it gets put in a nursery somewhere and you can go and buy it. Okay, like, and so what that looks like to us is is, is what? Is the wire cage. The bag. wire cage. Yes. Okay. And the grow bag is our okay. number two premium liners, typically, that are actually bought air root. With so, uh, they're like one inch, they're one inch whips, and they come from a place like uh, JF Schmidt. You order like uh, 20,000 of them. Like, I went Oregon. to right, I went to Chestnut Ridge Nursery to visit them. He had an order just received an order of 33,000 trees that they all had to sow into the ground. A little different, but I'll tell you that in a second. But the grow bags, John gets them thousands at a time and actually has a machine that's set up that they drop the trees in. Um, and they actually fill them with compost in these grow bags and they grow above ground. And John really only keeps them for a year or two at the most, and then they're sold. So and we refer to them as the grow, B and Bs. No, no, that's no grow, bags. The grow bags. Yep. So the, the handles that we have yes, for the grow right, bags. The grow yeah, bag. And they've so, been grown in that yeah. bag from when they were, I don't know, how tall are the liners? Right. Uh there the, depends the species, but I mean the line they're, they're already pre the roots are pre-cut. So they're cut in a round shape to fit right. in the bag. So there's no, so John's crew doesn't have to be trimming roots and then doing this. John just sticks them in, fill it, they stand it up, and they move to the next one. So those are our grow bags. Yes. And then the ones with the wires are B and B. Those are the okay. And then there's the uh, oddball container stuff yeah. that we all are familiar with, like at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. We used to plant container here. Yeah. And like, like, uh, that's another very large growing medium that's all over the world, actually. It's kind of crazy. Uh, and then the the being the uh, bare root stock. Yeah. So the bare root stock is basically number two premium liner plant material, little larger stock that is actually sent to a nursery. The nursery has a tractor with a huge machine on the back. Three people sit on the back. Two people feed the trees into the machine, basically, and as the machine carves out a uh, basically, it's like a furrow. Mm -hmm. Cars a furrow in the ground. They drop the trees in. They stand them up straight. They throw a little fertilizer on them, and then the machine they're dragging that and takes the has the reverse and fills the hole in. And they just plant them that mm -hmm. way. And then they typically will grow them for a year or two, and then they harvest them as bare root. Mm -hmm. So they will take the shoots all the yep. right now. They dip it yep. in that of, uh -huh. uh, of like gel, hydrogel, and water, yeah. and, and then, then they put it in the bag. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's so, videos on my YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's really it's really cool. And I got to visit Chestnut Ridge and they have uh 180 acres. And where are they? They're in uh State outside of Buffalo. So they are in uh, Orchard Park, New York. Mm -hmm. And they took us around. They are from the Schick they were here Schickel's nursery. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the nice. Schickel's family, and they sort of when the father um Passed away. Um, they divided the, the children all divided the nursery mm -hmm. business. So Chestnut Ridge is one of the children of George Schickel. Mm -hmm. We used to be buy we have bought from Schickels in the past. They're both good, but Chestnut Ridge has been really good about honoring their stock if it ends up dying or whatever. So it's a relationship. It's a big difference. Yeah, it is a, and it's a it's a better bank for our buck too, because uh, you can get a tree from one to 
under a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know. So just a time check. It's ten forty five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that's? Um, that's on, what I had on my. Unless somebody else, do you want to take this with you? Oh uh, sure. Yeah, I just have one question. Also, yep. are the locations that trees could be planted are those being tracked on the tree tracker or somewhere else? Or just in people's heads. Potential, yeah. potential, potential locations. Yeah, yeah. Um, both. Yeah. 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 As soon as I get figure out what kind of tree they go in the tree tracker. Sure. Yeah. But I have like a few of them down at the bottom of the tree tracker, like addresses. For example, um, when I get the when I get the email from Rich with the list of the stump grinds, mm -hmm. um, I think I think I know people who have worked with Rob. You've worked with Rob before. You worked Rob before to go out and and stake, mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah, and then just kind of decide small, medium, or large. Probably my what I would like is then those addresses would go in the tree track, or they just wouldn't. They'd have a small next to them, small tree, medium tree, yeah. Mm. yeah. And then and, we can once be able to sort that tree tracker. Yes. Yep. And just and, just for everyone's information, there is a conversation happening at the commission level about setback plantings in relation to um, smaller uh, uh, plant material. Oh. So not just small trees, but like smaller woody. Like uh, big shrubs. Uh, big, big shrubs. Big, yeah. yeah. So so there's there's a. Um, the conversation that's been brought up, there's a few two commissioners, uh, Jordan Freed and David Lukens, that are actually going to be kind of working on some kind of presentation or a list. proposal, a list of plant material. So well, when you go to do the setback, the conversation with the individual person who's interested, there might be more options than just a single stem mm -hmm. tree. Because right now we just provide a single stem tree, but MGL 87 mm -hmm. says that Thank you can provide trees and shrubs okay. within so the 20 so. Eco habitats mm -hmm. and yeah. pollinators and other critters yeah. versus just shade structures. 